Tesla jumped huge this week, but the Fed might have just killed capitalism. And Elon didn't tank Tesla stock with Twitter. Until Saturday. I'll tell you what I'm seeing and what my game plan is for Tesla stock this week. And you can copy off my paper. Right now. Welcome back everyone. In this video we will cover the huge week that just happened. What are the key takeaways from it? And I will lay out my strategy for the coming week. And if you want to join the community of the new cool kids, you know, the one where everyone is invited, not just the ones with long flowy hair and perfectly shaped heads, go ahead and subscribe, hit that little notifications bell, and while you're down there, go ahead and give the video a like as well. So let's recap the prior week. Monday, the Dow was up 26 points. Tuesday, the Dow was up 133 points. Wednesday, the Dow was down 218 points. Thursday, the Dow was up 211 points. And Friday, the Dow was up another 455 points. So let's do some super technical analysis. And this is easy this week. Happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. And especially the moms out there that are subscribers or just watching this video. I hope your day is frothy. What are my takeaways from the week? There are really three big takeaways for me this week. The first big takeaway, the Fed is buying junk bonds. Wow, I never thought I would actually be saying those words. What kind of a world do we live in where instead of the Fed doing things to help out the American people, they are now going to help bad companies? I'm not here to argue with the nuances. In the end, that's exactly what a junk bond is. It's a debt from a dying company that most likely won't be paid back. Which of course means the interest that the bad company has to pay is higher, which then means the company actually has less money to operate when they pay all that interest. And you see how this quickly turns into like a death spiral. Yeah, whatever. But never fear, the Fed is here. And yes, before you guys go run into the comments, they did put in some guidelines and rules. But like we saw with the small business loans, you know, the ones that went to Ruth's Chris and other large companies like that instead of the little guys who actually need it. I'm sure whatever rules they actually put in will get wiggled around, wormed around, or slanted to those with the most, you know, friends. Think about it. But how much are they going to buy? The answer is, as many as they want. Remember, the Fed announced earlier that they will provide unlimited support. And I guess since they can technically print money, I guess they can pretty much do this forever. I think this has two major consequences. The first, the bad actors can just stay bad. It's like the rich kid who's a complete idiot, never does anything for himself, just completely acts a fool. And when he screws up, mom and dad's money steps in and, you know, fixes it. Just so he can go out and do the same stupid thing again or something even dumber the next time. And the cycle just repeats itself over and over and over. I know it didn't get talked about, and I know it's not gonna create a lot of attention right now, but essentially capitalism as we know it is dead. With capitalism, when a company dies, another one takes its place. And a new company is typically better, offers a better product, or is just merely a better run company. But now everyone lives, no one dies. You can live on forever no matter how bad you suck. I got a video coming later this week about just that. And the second problem with all this, it hurts Tesla too. I'll address this specifically later on when I talk about Tesla stock. The second big takeaway from the week, markets are approaching pre-illness levels already. I released a video earlier that explains why I think the stock market is going to crash soon. I'll link it at the end of this video for you guys so you don't have to go hunting for it. But the premise is tracking right along with what's actually going on. The stock market is still up despite record bad news. Just look. The Dow is only down 14% for the year. The S&P is only down 9%. And the NASDAQ is actually up 1%. What is going on? Everybody is impacted with a few exceptions and everything is positive. But wait, it gets even better. Hold on, hold on, it gets better. If you look at just the past year's performance, so basically you take right now and compare it to the same time last year and it gets even more fascinating. And remember, 
Last summer, we were riding high relative to right now. You know, low unemployment, economy doing well overall, corporate earnings looking really good, people smashing the like button for my videos. Everything basically, you know, normal. But now with a lot of the metrics, we are in Great Depression territory. And the S&P is positive for the year. It's actually better than it was a year ago. And look at the NASDAQ. It's up over 14% from last year. 14%. What is going on? This just makes no sense at all. And it's why I've been staying away from buying a bunch of other stocks, except for Tesla. Something is broken and it just feels like a setup. These valuations are so rich. Even during the best of times, the stocks cannot reach the revenue needed to hit these valuations, much less during the economic times we are in right now. And this isn't a case of just sensationalized news creating something that isn't there. This is just bonkers and it's driving me nuts. I can't figure it out. And the third thing I see is record unemployment continues. The record decline in unemployment continued again. Another 3.2 million people filed for unemployment this week, continuing the unprecedented pace of unemployment growing. So this means there are 33 million new people out of work right now since this started. Like I said in my last weekly video, we are in Great Depression territory. So in regards to unemployment, we are just going to compare it to that. And the actual unemployment rate was just released for April. And it was bad. Unemployment skyrocketed like we thought to 14.7%. Again, the highest level since the Great Depression, which we think peaked at around 20 to 23%. It didn't really keep official statistics on that until after World War II. Looking at real unemployment, it is right at 22.7%. What is real employment, you may ask? It's everyone without a job, not just those who are unemployed and looking for a job, which is how the unemployment rate is currently calculated. And during normal times, that metric makes sense. But now we have circumstances that has never happened before, making the real unemployment rate a more accurate way to measure unemployment. There are plenty of people right now that are unemployed and being paid to stay at home, so they're not actively looking for jobs. Therefore, they are not being counted in the unemployment number for now. Unemployment is at a point where it will take years, not months, but years to get back to a normal level of unemployment. So after all that bad news, I just need you guys to smash the like button. It will make you feel better, and I know it makes me feel better when you guys do it. Hey, we need positivity, good vibes, good sensations. Ooh, okay, I'll stop, sorry. My strategy for the week. As always, this is for entertainment purposes only, as I am a complete idiot. Thanks to everyone who jumped in on Discord this week. Some great people are already there dropping great knowledge and helping others out. And someone even promoted my Discord on Graham Stephan's Discord. That's pretty cool stuff, so please keep it going. We will eventually crush Graham, by the way. I'm only 1.8 million subscribers away. But hey. The road to 3.3 trillion subscribers makes a brief pass at 1.8 million. So make sure you are subscribed so you are in before that. You don't want to be the person who jumped in after 1.8 million subscribers. Sorry, I'm way off topic, back to Tesla. Even though nothing happened, Elon pretty much ruined my Friday as I didn't want to stray too far away from the news in case he had a meltdown again. I was out enjoying my Friday last Friday after watching trading that morning and not really thinking anything was gonna happen for the rest of the day. But Elon had to tweet that the stock was overvalued. By the time I checked that afternoon, it had lost 10% and everything was closed so I couldn't trade on it. So my buy on a few Tesla shares actually didn't post until Monday at $724 per share. I post those over on Patreon for anybody looking for that in real time. And now that we're sitting up over $800, really wasn't that bad of a trade. Oh yeah. And before I forget again, click the link down in the description to get your two free stocks from Webull if you open an account and fund it with at least $100. They swear up and down this time that the free stocks are going away after May 11th. So that is supposedly the last day you can sign up and get the promotion. But this is like the second or third time they put a date out there and said that's the last day it's gonna happen. So I just don't want you guys to miss out if they truly are taking it away this time. So once again, Tesla tried to reopen the Fremont factory on Friday. 
without the go-ahead of the local officials who actually make the call on reopening the factory. But it really didn't move the stock much in regards to opening and then having to stay closed, you know, that whole ordeal. I guess Tesla has done it so many times in the recent past that the market just knows better. Oh, and Elon stayed off Twitter, at least in regards to Tesla stock until Friday. And then Saturday happened. I guess eight days was just too much to ask and too long. So because they cannot open the Fremont factory, Elon tweeted this. We'll try public reading once again. Tesla is filing a lawsuit against Alameda County immediately. The unelected and ignorant interim health official or officer, told you guys I can't read in public, of Alameda is acting contrary to the governor, the president, our constitutional freedoms, and just plain common sense. And then he doubled down and kept going. Frankly, this is the final straw. Tesla will now move its headquarters and future programs to Texas slash Nevada immediately. If we even retain Fremont manufacturing activity at all, it will be dependent on how Tesla is treated in the future. Tesla is the last car maker left in California. Well, alrighty then. Ooh, he seems a little hot. The news that Tesla may not be able to open until June 1st was going to hurt a little. But prolonged litigation and attempting to move your headquarters and potentially not using the Fremont factory is only going to make it worse in the short term. I never understood why he put a factory in California in the first place. And I'm not knocking California at all. It's just a tough place to run a profitable factory operation. Hence why no one except Tesla makes cars there. But this is just a hollow threat at best. Right now, Fremont is your go-to factory for at least the next year or so. And I'm not here to start a political debate on if Tesla should or should not be allowed to open up that factory. I just know that the news that they cannot potentially open until June 1st hurts. And the Twitter rant makes it worse. So how does all of this affect what I'm looking to buy this week? I will not be buying other stocks this week unless something just really jumps out and grabs me. As far as Tesla goes, it's a little different. Like I mentioned earlier, and I'll go ahead and give you guys a lowdown right now, I believe the Fed has opened the possibility for other automakers to start competing with Tesla. I'm not saying they're gonna beat them or anything else like that, just there's a door open. And it's pretty simple. Do we know any automaker with junk bonds out there? Maybe like this company? I'm working on a deep dive in this subject right now, but there are some troubling signs out there and possible implications for Tesla stock. But short version, bottom line is, it doesn't help Tesla. This is a very nuanced and detailed discussion, so I'm working on that video right now and hopefully I can get it out to you this week. But that is more of a long-term problem. Short term for this week, we may get another Elon dump in the stock. So I will look for an opportunity to buy a few Tesla shares this week, just like I did last week. I'll post those trades immediately over on Patreon, just like I always do. And even with all the noise, nothing has changed in my long-term outlook for Tesla. I still think it's a $1,500 stock in two to three years, even if it's getting frothy right now out there for Tesla. So click this video right here to get more information on the stock market crash I see coming. Thanks.